Burma Army controls the government of Burma. Attacks continue across Burma. Thank God we're speaking up for the Rohingya, but it's not an aberration. It's not a one-off. That's just the latest thing they're doing. They've been doing something like that all the time for almost 70 years against the Karen, against the Karen, against the Shan, against the Kachin. Bit by bit by bit by bit. If you see this, Suchi, you know, I met with you, and I love you. I prayed with you, and I, I respect you. We named our daughter Suzanne, S-U-U, -U, after Suchi. And so I hope I can say this to you with all respect. You need to speak. Don't worry about what it's going to cost you. You didn't before. You need to speak for the Rohingya and the Kachin and the Karen. You need to say they count. The Burma army controls the government of Burma. Even though there's been many ceasefires, attacks continue across Burma. I'm David Eubank of the Free Burma Rangers. We've been serving and helping the people in Burma for over 20 years through our Free Burma Ranger relief teams who go into conflict areas to give immediate help, hope, and love. Help being medical and other humanitarian assistance. Hope, reminding people they're not forgotten, helping to tell their story. And love, God loves you, we love you, we're in this together. And the situation in Burma, we've seen go through many cycles. Right now, the situation is the Burma army controls the government of Burma. And even though there's been many ceasefires, attacks continue across Burma. Aung San Suu Kyi and her elected National League of Democracy won an election fair and square. However, she does not have final power. The army does. Eight major groups signed it. There's less fighting in those areas. There's less displacement in those areas. There's less forced labor. There are fewer political prisoners. These are the good news. And it's easier to travel. The bad news is the Roman army selectively attacks other groups who haven't signed the ceasefire, such as the Kachin. Over 100,000 people displaced. Airstrikes last week. Ongoing attacks in all areas of Kachin state. Northern Shan state, attacks against the Northern Shan and at the Ang continue. This past week up through today, the Burma armies attacked the Kren in northern Kren state, the Lermupla area of Luthaw Township, Muthra, 5th Brigade area of northern Kren state, and of course the Rohingya, over 700,000 people recently displaced by the Burma army. So when you look at that picture as a whole, you realize Burma is not going in a good direction. And so I believe the role of people everywhere is pray as God leads you. If you're to be involved in Burma, pray for change in Burma. Support the pro-democracy and ethnic groups. Give any resources you can to help people in humanitarian or other areas, or come volunteer yourself. And get your own feet on the ground and help the people who are either being attacked in non-ceasefire areas or being oppressed in ceasefire areas. That's our view of the situation. In the midst of that, our teams go into the fighting areas, like right now in Kren State, in, in the Ang area of Shan State, and Kachin State, and in the fighting, try to help people who are fleeing. In areas where there's not active fighting, such as 6th Brigade, Duplia District of the 6th Brigade, Central Korean State, our teams are in there not getting shot at, but trying to build up the communities, provide medical care for those who don't have it, and report back what's going on. On the western side, where the Rohingya have fled into Bangladesh, we have a team there right now training an information gathering team from among the Rohingya refugees to go back in and find out what's happening. At the same time, we, are, we have a very small effort from our Arakan teams trying to bring relief to the Rohingya in Arakan State. That's, these are our, our roles. In the midst of all this, Free Burma Rangers have been invited to help people in the Middle East because of the attacks of ISIS. So in the last four years, along with our main effort of Burma, we've taken teams to Syria, to Kurdistan, and Iraq, all through the Battle of Mosul, for example, helping IDPs there. And one great... Um, Result of that, along with many people who were lives were saved by Karen medics, was that Karen, Kachin, and Kareni medics and pastors and videographers went into the Battle of Mosul, and people in Iraq like, who are you? And what are you doing here? And don't even know where Burma is, and why would you come? And the answer was always, God sent us, because God loves everybody. And so bonds of love and friendship began to grow between the people of Burma and people in Iraq and Syria and Kurdistan, and now those same people and their governments are starting to put pressure on the Burma army gov government, the Burma government, because of the Burma's attacks against Muslims. So the main effort of FBR is in Burma to help people, but we feel God has opened doors for us to help in other areas. And so we do that. And if you boil down the mission of FBR, it would be two things. Help people and get the word out. One of the things, the words we want to get out is a, a, a project right now 
conducted by the KNU up in 5th Brigade, Mutra District, and Kisan and others, and that's the Salween Peace Project, where a part of Northern Karen State, which is Northeast Burma, to be set aside to preserve the wildlife, to support the communities that have been there for hundreds of years, and to keep the Burma Army from rampaging through and destroying not only the people, but the animals and the environment. And this is a wonderful project that needs prayer, it needs funds, it needs political support, and finally, it needs help to stop the Burma Army. I can say the Burma Army has plans to put dams in the Salween, which would wreak havoc on people's livelihoods as well as the environment. And so most people that live along the path of the dam flooding don't want it. It would flood a lot of Kren State, displace many people, damage that environment, and the people there feel like they would benefit very little from it. They're against it. In fact, one Kareni leader was asked by a BBC journalist once, um, what do you think about the dam? He said, it will not happen while I'm alive. So this is one of the things that we want to advocate for is this area where the environment is protected, where the people are allowed to thrive and grow. And we'll do anything we can to help. Just one example. 20 years ago when I walked through that area of Karen State, I'd see wildlife all the time. But as the Burma Army attacked and pushed Karen out of their villages up into the forest preserves, which the Karen had up to now made illegal to hunt. You're not allowed to hunt. So wildlife flourished. I mean, you could hunt in some areas, but in some areas they, they set aside. But now people are pushed into those areas and you got to eat. There's nothing else to eat. There's no harvest of a crop. There's hardly any plants to eat. So then this has caused the animal population to drop. And it's the fault of the Burma Army, burning people's homes, shooting at them, forcing them up in the hills. And so peace means the people can go back down. It doesn't just mean the Burma Army stops where they are, where there are over 100 camps in northern Karen State. It means they get out so people can get out of those areas, the wildlife can come back, and people can go back to their regular livelihood. So I believe part of the, the Peace Park idea is just that, is that this will be an area that the Karen administrator in whatever relationship they form with the Burma government, federal, state, or independence, that's between them and the Burma government, but they'll have a say over this area. Yeah, March the 4th, 2018, the Burma Army launched a series of attacks in the Limupla, Bonade, Kepu um, Valley and Hill system, which is on the west side of the Yunzalan River in northern Mutra district, Lutha Township. And it's an area that we've been to for almost 20 years, actually 20 years have been going that area. And the Burma Army has gone through and rampaged through it many times. And I remember one particular time in 2001, they killed many people, chased everybody out of the Limitlaw Valley. And I met a little girl who'd been shot in the stomach, was in a coma for two weeks, but lived. And her name was Namu Dewa. And we brought her to Thailand to see if we could take the bullet out, but it's one millimeter from her spine. And so they thought better to leave it. And then we sent her back and I saw her a couple of years later, but I didn't see her for almost 10 years. And in January this year, 2018, my family and I and some of our Free Burma Ranger teams, after we graduated the new, the new set of people, we went up to that same valley system. And I was surprised to see the Burma Army were on two camps in the hills, but they weren't doing anything. And the people had come back. Over 2,000 people had returned. And they said, well, we can see the Burma Army, but we understand it's a ceasefire. They shouldn't shoot at us. We don't shoot at them. They don't shoot at us. They'd, so the Karen had rebuilt their homes. They had buffalo out there. They're plowing the fields. And then all of a sudden, this woman came up to me with a little baby, a young lady, and she said, do you remember me? And I looked at her, and I thought, Namu Dewa, grown up. She said, yes, I'm a mother now. I, this is the first time I've come back to my home, and I hope I can stay. And do you think I can stay? I said, let's pray. I hope you can. She said, I hope the Burma Army doesn't attack. The last time we were standing right here, we were harvesting, and right over there came the Burma Army about 40 meters away. They opened up. They killed my uncle. They shot another villager. They shot my cousin in the neck. They shot my friend in the arm, and they shot me in the stomach. And I fell down, but my relatives helped me flee. And then we all ran. And now I'm back. I hope I don't have to flee. Well, that was in January this year. And now we're in March. Just two months later, the Burma Army did attack and sent four battalions down this valley and, and hill system where there's a road from a place called Kepu down to Limapla and Summerpla to rebuild a road they'd built years earlier but stopped by the KNU. And now, in spite of the ceasefire, they're going to rebuild it again and force people off. And the Kren Army has mobilized very few forces up there, four or five-man teams, to go up and try to stop um, the Burma Army onslaught. 
at the same time, inside um, Rangoon and Napida, the KNU leaders are meeting with the Burma Army trying to negotiate another ceasefire within the ceasefire. Why are you attacking right now? But while that's happening, no matter what happens between the KNU leadership and the Burma Army, the people have been forced to flee, over 2,000 of them, 1,700 the first three days, and now it's up to 2,000, have fled that area. The militia and the KNLA are doing their best to stop any further attacks, and that's where we're at right now. And we've sent one team that's already with, been with them, and we're sending another team uh, two days ago has already gone up to help. And so we'll send food, medicine, tarps, blankets, and also document and make an update and pray with people. I mean, I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> We've been going there for years, and, they, and now they have to run again. And when you say you're really sorry, what, what is that? I, I am really sorry. And so what can we do? All we can do is hold their hand and cry with them and say, we're sorry with you, but we're not going to leave. And if it gets worse and this continues and the Burma Army doesn't back, I'll go back there, my family go back there like we did for years, and we'll, we can't stop the Burma Army, but we'll be with the people and we'll be with them. And hopefully that won't be necessary. They'll, the Burma Army will pull back, but we don't know. And so until Kren State is free, until Burma is free, and as long as God has us, we'll stand with the people. Before 2006 or 7 offensive by the Burma Army, there was no population in Ituta. And suddenly when the Burma Army attacked, I was there, the first boatload of people that fled from 2nd, 3rd, and parts of 5th Brigade all the way to the Salween came to the river. And I remember they got off the boat on a little sandy bank near Ituta and I said, where are they from? Oh, they're from back there where the Burma Army's Army attacked. Well, where are they going to stay? Well, they'll just be here for a couple months, you know, and they'll be able to go home. And that was 10 years ago, 11 years ago. They haven't gone home. They can't go home. You look at this latest attack. That's in deeper than the attacks that occurred in 2006 and 2007. And so now the newly displaced people can't go back. So the people of Ituta have been there for 11 years, and they survive on whatever food and assistance people can give them. Just because there's a ceasefire agreement in Burma, just because Aung San Suu Kyi is part of the government, doesn't mean the people of Utita are safe or can go home or don't need help. They are not safe there. They can be attacked anytime on that river. Second, they need food and help because there's no big rich Karen mechanism to feed them. And third, they can't go home because the Burma army is still at their homes and will shoot them just like they shot the other people. So right now, I believe that we should stand with the people of Ituta and other places where people are displaced. It's not yet time to go home. We'll know when it's time to go home. They don't want to stay on the side of a river, smoking hot with all crowded together like this. They came from farms and mountains and hills, and they had freedom. They don't want to stay there one day longer than they have to. But right now, they can't go home, and right now they got to eat. You know, it, it, it wasn't like Mosul. Mosul, we saw thousands killed, and... Um, my translator was killed next to me. I was shot. 30 of my friends were, were killed. Two of my team members were shot and wounded. And we had three vehicles, vehicles shot up. The unit I was with started with 105 BMP armored personnel carriers, small um, cannons on these armored APCs. We started with 105. We finished with 12. We started with 40-something Humvees. We finished with five. One was mine that was blown up. And thousands killed. And the scale was brutal. You'd be running over dead bodies on an assault because you couldn't get out of being shot at. There's dead. You can't do anything about it. So it's not the scale of Mosul. It wasn't the scale of um, the Khmer Rouge wiping out a million people in Cambodia. Those are like traumas. What's been going on in Burma all these almost 70 years is more like a cancer, slow eating away. So I've seen hundreds killed, but usually three or four at a time here. Two in this village, three in that village. Grandmother laying there, a little three-year-old. I mean, coming, you know, laying on her back, shot in the face. The mother had run, dragging her until she was shot, and then the little girl was shot. These ran down, and shot her, point blank. And this is twos and threes and five and twelve and ten, and small numbers, small numbers. But they don't stop; they just keep going. A little seven-year-old girl raped by the Burma Army. And the Burma Army shot her. And they called the parents and they said, if you talk about it, we'll kill you. So it just keeps going on. It keeps going on. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. It's like a slow cancer. So 
people talk about, you know, look at the Burma army now, how terrible they are against the Rohingya. That's true. Thank God we're speaking up for the Rohingya, but it's not an aberration. It's not a one-off. That's just the latest thing they're doing. They've been doing something like that all the time for almost 70 years against the Karen, against the Karenni, against the Shan, against the Kachin, bit by bit by bit by bit. And so I think what we want people to know is that the Burma government has to change. And Suu Kyi is not to be blamed for all the terrible things the Burma army is doing. But Suu Kyi needs, in my view, to speak for those people. And if you see this, Suu Kyi, you know, I met with you and I love you. I prayed with you and I, I respect you. We named our daughter Suzanne, S-U-U, after Suu Kyi. And so I hope I can say this to you with all respect. You need to speak. Don't worry about what it's going to cost you. You didn't before. You need to speak for the Rohingya and the Kachin and the Karen. You need to say they count. You need to say these attacks are wrong. You need to say we're going to have a compromise. This is my opinion. But I don't blame her for the attacks. It's not her fault. I don't think she wants any of them. Um, she doesn't have the power. I think it's an important thing. She does not have the power. The army has the power. And so we should come down hard on that army. And, the, and we're going to stop all of our support for you financially. We're going to stop supporting your military. And we're going to give direct humanitarian assistance to the ethnic peoples, not through you. And we're going to get right in the middle of you guys. And that's what I think the international community needs to do. But right now, there seems to me that people are worried about the Rohingya, but they're kind of hoping it goes away. It's not going to go away. Those who watch this, thank you for caring and watching it, and thanks for all your help. God bless you in Jesus' name.